Hello everyone, welcome back. In this session, we will be dealing with the blood supply of internal capsule. So before viewing this session, I want you all to see the session on uh, the introduction to the white matter of cerebrum followed by you have to ha have a look at the corpus callosum. Then you have to see the sessions on internal capsule, the introduction, the motor fibers, how the sensory fibers are arranged. Then you have to uh, see the session on the blood supply of internal capsule. So blood supply of internal capsule is very, very important because whenever there is a hemorrhage or a thrombosis for major vessels supplying the brain, you need to know which all regions are supplied by that vessel uh, in order to assess the, in order to clinically assess the patient. Uh, so internal capsule we know that if, if there is a very small lesion in the internal capsule, it is going to affect uh, a major portion of the opposite half of the body. So, we will see how the blood vessels are going to supply the internal capsule. So, there are many versions and uh, it's a bit confusing also. But still, I have tried my level best to make it easier for you. Uh, so, uh, I will just show the parts of internal capsule here. This is the anterior limb. This is the genu. This is the posterior limb. This is going back. So, it is the retrolentiform part and this is the sublentiform part. So, this is a schematic representation of the internal capsule. Now, moving on to the blood supply, we need to know some basics. That is, which are the major vessels supplying the internal capsule. We know that there are mainly three cerebral vessels, the anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, posterior cerebral where anterior and middle cerebral are branches of internal carotid whereas posterior cerebral artery is a branch of basilar artery. So basilar system and internal carotid artery. These are the two systems of vessels supplying the entire uh, brain within the cranial cavity. So again the internal capsule is also receiving blood, blood supply from all the three major vessels the anterior cerebral, middle cerebral, posterior cerebral and one more vessel you will see uh, that is uh, anterior choroidal artery. So these are the major vessels uh, which we will be seeing when we talk one, uh, the different parts of the internal capsule one by one. Uh, and before moving on to the details, I would like you to remember this small aspect, this is just a concept that is internal carotid artery is giving one direct branch into supply the internal capsule. Then two arteries starting with A that is the anterior cerebral and anterior choroidal. We just mentioned all these vessels. So the anterior cerebral and anterior choroidal they are giving two branches each and the middle cerebral and posterior cerebral are giving three branches each. First uh, we will go in that way so that it will be easy for you I hope. So internal carotid artery one direct branch, anterior cerebral and anterior choroidal two branches middle cerebral and posterior cerebral three branches. So this these are the vessels which are going to supply the internal capsule. Now let us see one by one. Internal carotid artery it is only giving one branch direct branch actually it is this is so I uh, will just show you which are the vessels marked here. This is the internal carotid artery. From the internal carotid artery you have the anterior cerebral artery and you have the larger terminal branch that is the middle cerebral artery. So these are the two main branches of the internal carotid artery. This is the basilar artery which is dividing into two posterior cerebral arteries, isn't it? So this is the posterior cerebral artery. Now these are connected by a, an artery known as posterior communicating artery. We are not going to talk much about the posterior communicating artery. Actually all the major vessels which are lying closer to the internal capsule will be definitely uh, giving off some branches but we are just mentioning about the major ones. So this, these are connected by posterior communicating artery and one artery which we have mentioned right now it is the anterior choroidal artery which is arising from the internal carotid. So we know this is the internal carotid artery with main branches anterior cerebral and middle cerebral. Then you have the basilar artery with the two posterior cerebral arteries. Then you have the anterior choroidal. So our, all the branches are which we have just mentioned are here. That is internal carotid here. Then you have the anterior cerebral here. Then you have the anterior choroidal this one. Then you have the middle cerebral here. Then you have the posterior cerebral here. Now what we have just mentioned is internal carotid is just giving one direct branch. So this is the one and only one direct branch and where is it going? 
This is the anterior limb, this is genu, posterior limb, retral lentiform and sublentiform. So where is this internal carotid artery direct branch going? This is actually going to the genu of internal capsule. So we will just see the boxes. This is the genu of internal capsule, internal carotid artery. Yes, one direct branch is going to the genu of the internal capsule. Now let's see the anterior cerebral artery. So anterior cerebral artery is anteriorly placed middle cerebral somewhere in the middle and posterior cerebral is uh, actually placed posteriorly. So that is the way in which the different parts of the internal capsule is also uh, supplied. So we will start with the anterior cerebral. We mentioned that it is giving two branches. So starting from the anterior limb and genu, it is exactly giving one branch. So this is the anterior cerebral. It is giving one branch to the anterior limb. Then the second branch is actually going to the genu of the internal capsule. So actually the branch arising from the anterior cerebral artery, it is actually going straight and having a recurrent course. So this branch is actually given another particular name that is known as recurrent artery of Hubner. Recurrent artery of Hubner. So recurrent artery of Hubner is again one of the commonest vessels which are subjected to thrombosis or hemorrhage and it is having a recurrent course and it is supplying, it is giving two branches that is what we have mentioned here. So it supplies the anterior limb and genu. So let's have a look. This is the anterior limb. Yes, anterior cerebral artery, Hubner, it is supplying it. Then genu, yes, the anterior cerebral artery, the Hubner is supplying it. Okay. Now we will see the anterior choroidal artery. So where is it? This is the anterior choroidal artery. So how many branches it is giving? It is giving two branches. So first branch, it is going to the posterior limb. Okay, this is the posterior limb. So first branch is going to the posterior limb and the another branch is going to the sublendiform part of internal capsule. So posterior limb and sublendiform part. So let's have a check. Posterior limb is this. Where is our anterior choroidal? Yes. And sublendiform is this. This is the anterior choroidal. Okay. And the importance of anterior choroidal artery is it is having a, a long slender subarachnoid course. It is having a longest course. So uh, because of that and because of the narrow lumen, it is uh, subjected to thrombosis, cerebral thrombosis. Hence it is also known as, anterior choroidal artery is also known as artery of cerebral thrombosis. Now we will move on to the middle cerebral artery. So middle cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery, they are giving three branches. So let's see. Where is the middle cerebral artery? This is our middle cerebral artery. So it is almost lying towards the anterior aspect, isn't it? So let's see the three branches. It starts with anterior limb, then it goes to the genu, then it goes to the posterior limb. So anterior limb, genu and posterior limb are supplied by the middle cerebral artery. Actually the branches arising from the uh, cerebral artery, anterior middle cerebral arteries are known as triate arteries and one of the lateral striate branch of the middle cerebral artery is very famous for hemorrhage, cerebral hemorrhage. Hence it is known as Charcot's artery. So the branch arising from middle cerebral artery, the lateral striate branch is more prone for hemorrhage, cerebral hemorrhage and that our vessel is known as Charcot's artery and it is also known as artery of cerebral hemorrhage. So which are the regions supplied by this vessel? It is supplying the anterior limb, genu and posterior limb. So let's have a look. Anterior limb, yes, middle cerebral artery, genu here again, then posterior limb, again middle cerebral artery. So these are the three branches arising from the middle cerebral artery. And finally, posterior cerebral artery, again three branches. So which are the regions supplied by the posterior cerebral? It starts with the posterior limb. So it gives a branch to posterior limb, then it goes to the retrolendiform, then it also goes to the sublendiform part of the internal capsule. So posterior limb, retrolendiform, sublendiform. So let's have a look. So posterior limb, this is the posterior cerebral artery, sublendiform, yes, and retrolendiform. These are the three branches arising from the posterior cerebral artery. And now if you just write it like this, then you can uh, make out some of the similarities or you can club these vessels. Like anterior limb, you have the anterior cerebral and middle cerebral. 
Genu is the next part, right? So you have the anterior cerebral, you have the middle cerebral, plus you just add the internal carotid artery. So anterior limb and genu is over, right? If you if you want to think it this way, it is well and good. It is a concept wise, so that it will be easy for you to draw the diagram. But if you want to uh, relate it or if you want to solve the clinical questions for an MCQ purpose, then you can just remember it this way so that you can just pick out uh, the op from the options very easily. So anterior limb, anterior cerebral and middle cerebral, genu, you just add the internal carotid with it. Now we will see the rest. Retrolendiform, posterior cerebral, sublendiform, you add anterior choroidal along with it and posterior limb, you add middle cerebral along with it. So, retrolendiform plus anterior choroidal will supply the sublendiform plus middle cerebral artery will supply the posterior limb. So, that is how you club this and uh, here it is anterior cerebral and middle cerebral supplying the anterior limb along with the internal carotid artery supplying the genu. So, if you club it this way then it will be easy for you to solve the MCQs because when you sit for uh, solving the MCQs you can't uh, just start with 1, 2, 3 like that. But if you want to draw the diagram it's very difficult to remember all these things uh, to going there to going into this place but if you have this concept in your mind first you draw the internal carotid then you draw the anterior cerebral and middle cerebral then you have the basilar artery with two posterior cerebral arteries and then you mark one anterior choroidal artery then if you have this concept that is one internal carotid artery direct branches going to genu then you have the anterior cerebral artery two branches you have to draw two branches that is the articular artery of Huebner going to uh, anterior limb and genu. Then you have the anterior choroidal artery again two branches. It is going to posterior limb and sublendiform part. Then middle cerebral it is giving three branches anterior limb, genu and posterior limb. Then the posterior cerebral very easy three more branches that is posterior limb, sublendiform and retrolendiform and sublendiform part. So this concept wise uh, understanding is essential when you have to write a short note or draw a diagram but if you just uh, club it in this way it will be easy for you to uh, finish off the MCQs within seconds. Now some of the applied aspects you know the Charcot artery is artery of cerebral hemorrhage and we know that Charcot's artery, the middle cerebral artery, it is supplying anterior limb, genu and posterior limb, especially the posterior limb that is what we are more concerned with because most of the uh, uh, strokes, uh, the neur neuronal lesions, if uh, the motor part is the presenting part. The sensory uh, defects won't be actually the presenting complaints of the patient, they will be more concerned about the motor complaints. So, if the posterior limb is affected in case of Charcot's artery hemorrhage, uh, it is in the posterior limb we have seen all the pyramidal and extrapyramidal fibers, right? So, the patient will be uh, presenting with contralateral hemiplegia with uh, extrapyramidal symptoms as well, that is spastic. Now, uh, another vessel is anterior uh, choroidal artery. So, anterior choroidal artery is uh, the artery supplying the uh, posterior limb as well as the sublentiform part. So, sublentiform part is actually uh, beneath the lentiform nucleus, isn't it? So, it is actually containing the auditory radiation. So, so they will be having some hearing loss. Then, uh, another vessel is Huebner's artery, artery of uh, art, which the artery which is actually prone for thrombosis as well. So that artery is mainly supplying we know the Huebner's artery the anterior cerebral it's a branch of anterior cerebral artery anterior limb and genu they are supplied by Huebner's artery but it is in the genu you have the corticonuclear fibers which are actually the motor fibers through uh, supplying the head and neck through the cranial nerves. So the patient will be presenting with motor symptoms more, right, more than the sensory. So the genu portion uh, symptoms will be predominating if the Huebner's artery is affected. So and sometimes the uh, neighboring regions of the pyramidal fibers lying closer to the genu, that is the upper limb as well, will be affected if you get a thrombosis for the Huebner's artery. So Huebner's artery, Charcot's so Huebner's artery, especially the genu, Charcot's artery, especially the posterior limb, 
with the contralateral hemiplegia, then the anterior choroidal artery with the sublendiform, mainly the auditory loss. And if the retrolendiform part is also affected in case of posterior cerebral artery, the patient will be suffering from hemianopia as well. So this is how uh, you will relate the uh, blood supply with the clinical aspects. So that's about the blood supply of internal capsule. Uh, hope you have understood. Thanks for watching.